Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skull Throne. Corn, also called the Blood God, the Lord of Skulls, the Lord of Rage, the Lord of Blood, Taker of Skulls, and Karnath, among many other titles, is the Chaos God of War, Hatred, Rage, Wrath, Blood, Martial Honor, Strength, and Murder. Its portfolio of interest covers the most basic and brutal of sentient emotions and actions such as hate, anger, rage, the desire for destruction, and the joy of killing one's enemies. Every act of killing or murder in the material universe feeds and empowers it. The more senseless and destructive, the better. However, Though Korn is the god of bloody slaughter, it is also the god of martial pride and honor of those who set themselves against the most dangerous foes and earn victory against the odds. A devotee of Korn is as likely to be an honorable champion in combat as a blood-crazed slaughterer. Cornets take no artful approach to killing, seeking only to slay rather than to inflict pain, because while the blood and death of their victims strengthens corn, their suffering actually empowers its nemesis, Slanesh. The name corn derives from the god's name in Chaos's demonic dark tongue, Karna meaning Lord of Rage or Lord of Blood. Korn is the mightiest and the oldest of the four major Chaos Gods, fully coming into existence in the Materium sometime during Terra's European Middle Ages in the early second millennium. Its birth heralded by an era of wars and conflict that raged across the globe. Korn is the Blood God, Lord of Rage, Taker of Skulls. It is Wrath Incarnate, the embodiment of a never-ending lust to dominate and destroy. It is Korn's sole desire to drown the galaxy in a tide of slaughter to conquer and kill every living thing until there is nothing left but spilled blood and shattered bone. The code of corn is simple, blood and more blood. Its only temple is the battlefield, its sole sacrament the spilled blood of nations. Consciously or not, all warrior cultures pay corn homage with their acts of murder and destruction, from the head-hunting tribes of backwater feral worlds to the planet-conquering chaos space marine warbands of the World Eater's Traitor Legion. Every single life taken in anger increases the Blood God's power. It looks well upon those who slay their friends and allies, for they prove their understanding of a greater truth. Corn cares not from whence the blood flows, only that it flows. Friends or enemies, all the dead are equal in the eyes of the Lord of Battle. Those cornered devotees who let a day pass without committing an act of bloody-handed slaughter inevitably incur its displeasure. Corn is said to have inherited a martial nobility and honor, and considers the weak and helpless to be unworthy of its wrath. The battle cry of the followers of Corn reflects the god's desire for wanton violence. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the throne of corn, 
Alternatively, they may cry, Skulls for the Skull Throne. In the throes of violence, its followers are also known to bellow, Kill, Maim, Burn, repeatedly while hacking apart their enemies. Also, the cornered berserkers known as Korn's Chosen often shout, Break their backs, while in the thick of the brutal, bloody battle they so passionately seek out. Followers of the Chaos God Slanesh, who cornered see as degenerate scum who kill only for pleasure rather than to test oneself against mighty enemies, are favored foes to face in battle, as are the servants of Zeej who are seen as sorcerers, unwilling to engage in fair and honorable combat. Korn's sacred number is eight, reflected in the organization of the gods' demonic armies, the blood legions, and in smaller matters such as the number of syllables in a cornered demon's name. Where possible, the blood gods' warriors will form up into squads of this number. Korn's primary colors are blood red, black, and brass. Interestingly, the mark of Korn looks vaguely like a figure of eight or a stylized human skull. The God of Blood. Korn is the Blood God, the angry and murderous Lord of Battle. It is said to be the warrior god whose bellows of insatiable rage echo through time and space back to the first act of violence ever committed by one mortal upon another. Devotees of the Runer's powers have debated forcefully about the primogenesis of the Blood God for millennia. Some hold that it was the will of Korn that first impelled a primitive to seize a rock and brain one of his fellows in a fit of murderous rage, thereby triggering the spiral of violence that fed the Chaos God to become the formidable force that now afflicts the galaxy. Others declare that it was the first mortal impulses of fury that breathed life into Korn, and that it represents the primitive lust for violence lurking in every mortal heart. However, the true disciples care nothing for such debate, as they are fully engaged with slaying all that come to hand. There are as many sources of conflict as there are beings in the universe. Jealousy, rage, sport, hunger, political advantage, territory, possessions, or even the simple, innate thirst for domination all breed and foster conflict. It is inescapable. There has never been a time or place free from it. Even those races claiming to be enlightened and peaceful cannot escape the basic truth that without conflict their progress would come to a halt, with challenging new ideas being left unconsidered. The victims and beneficiaries of conflict are not limited to emerging only from simple personal struggles. In the grandest scales, systems of government, even entire cultures and civilizations are destroyed by stronger ones, often as easily as a Chaos Space Marine reaches out with a power fist and crushes the frail frame of a grot. It is through conflict that the mighty rise and the weak fall. At its most basic level, conflict is the survival of one thing at the expense of another. 
In spite of its apparently self-destructive aspects, Corn is overtly the most potent and active of all the Chaos Gods. Endless wars and bloodshed in the mortal realm fuel it with the skulls of the slain constantly drawn into the gods' raging depths. It needs no honeyed promises or convoluted plots to draw mortals into its realm. The anger and fury lurking just below their civilized demeanor is often more than enough. The path to Korn's domain can be just as slippery as any represented by the other more subtle runer's powers. The instinct to violence is a necessary one in a hostile universe and is lauded in protectors or liberators. Many societies must literally fight to survive and they celebrate their members for their ability to defend themselves and others. Corn is conflict embodied to its most violent and extreme, and thus it is eternal and omnipresent. In all places and throughout every era and across every intelligent species, its influence has been felt by all. Its attentions have had a hand in determining the outcome of seemingly every antagonistic confrontation, from a disagreement between two angry scribes to the galaxy-crushing battles of the horror's heresy. Reaching out from its skull throne beyond the illusion of reality in which mortal beings live and die, Corn touches the greatest conflicts. It pushes them forward, encouraging their growth, driving men and women to take from their rivals that which they have not the strength to retain. Corn stokes the fires of their hostility where expanding civilizations lay competing claims to newfound resources, the Blood God fans the flames of discord. As a brother grows jealous of his sibling's position, corn heats the blood and the envy to the boiling point. Conflict is embraced as possessions are claimed, resources are seized, and brothers are slain. Through it all, blood flows to corn, and it laughs as its power grows. Its Manifestation The Blood God is commonly depicted as a brawl and muscular humanoid who stands hundreds of feet tall. Corn has the face of a savage, snarling dog, though the god's twisted features are all but hidden by a baroque helm decorated with the skulls of conqueror kings. Corn is often referred to as a he with the masculine gender. Though, in fact, like all the entities composed of psychic energy called the Chaos Gods, it, in fact, has no gender. Its exaggerated physique is further distorted by heavy, overlapping plates of armor fashioned from brass and blackened iron. Its every word is a growl of endless fury, and its roars of bloodlust echo across its realm. Corn broods from a throne of carved brass atop a mountain of skulls. The macabre trophies of the fleshless head of the blood god's champions stacked alongside those of their defeated opponents. A hundred thousand species are represented, from human heads beyond counting to tyranid skulls the size of hive city hab blocks. The ever-growing pile of blood-stained bone reflects the material victories of the blood god's followers, feeding Korn's glory 
but never quenching its thirst for blood and death. At its side rests a great two-handed sword, a legendary blade capable of laying waste to the substance of worlds with a single blow. This fell weapon is known by various names to the different intelligent species of the galaxy, including Woebringer, Warmaker, and the End of All Things. It is said that when Korn takes up its sword, a single sweep can cut through reality itself, allowing its demonic blood legions to spill forth into the Materium. The mountain of skulls upon which Korn sits slowly grows ever higher. By some accounts, a great forge sits at the base of the throne, in which the weapons and armor used by Korn's mortal and demonic servants are forged. They hold that Korn is the Chaos God that embodies mindless and absolute violence, the wild bloodlust that once unleashed yearn to destroy everyone within reach, whether they be friend or foe. Such true believers are few in number, and they grow fewer all the time, as the gods' devoted followers gleefully send one another into its embrace, knowing that Korn cares not from where the blood flows. Depictions of Korn often show it as a titanic, armored figure, covered from head to foot in armored plates of strange and alien design. The figure's armor is usually elaborately carved and worked with a repeating skull motif while its head is covered by a great, winged helm showing a bestial, snarling face beneath. In most images, it bears a rune-covered sword, axe, Though, in more primitive cultures, the god is often shown only with fists or claw-like hands. The Sacred Number Eight Why Korn is connected to the Number Eight is unknown, but it has been so since the warp first echoed to the god's fury. Its affinity for the figure and any of its multiples is strongly reflected in the organization of its demon's blood legions, from the number of bloodthirster ranks to the number of cohorts in a full strength legion. It is a number that also appears throughout the blood god's domain in the Immaterium, as eight enormous towers ring the brass citadel, and a cornered demon slain in real space must complete eight tasks before Korn will once again give them shape. In most sprawling of battles within the warp, it is always Korn's eighth wave that is the most powerful. Even the gods' mortal worshippers recognize and revere the sacred number, using it in their blood-soaked summoning rituals and carving it upon their flesh in gruesome ceremonies. The seers of many species have foretold that only after eight ages of war have passed will Korn's bloodthirst finally be slaked by a last apocalyptic battle. Now on to its philosophy and methods. There is no peace, there is only time wasted between battles. From Ergathon of the Skull Takers, a champion of Korn. The fundamental conflicts that drive mortal life forward sustain Korn on a base level much as bread and water might sustain a creature of flesh. 
But just as a mortal body craves more substantial food, so too does corn desire greater conflicts. It is not content to lurk in the background, inciting petty squabbles or drinking in the joys of a remote border dispute. Corn is not some mere beast or other lowly temporal being. It is a god, and the appetite of a god is terrible and insatiable. Its worship takes many forms. Primitive human cultures have followed it since the time they first were able to hunt game and make war upon their neighbors. Many of them are not even aware that the god they venerate is the blood god itself. Some do not even think of it as a god. To them it is a force of nature to be appeased, or a spirit to be persuaded. A common representation of corn in these cultures is that of a great beast, such as a shadowy mastiff, eyes ablaze as it seeks its prey. Enlisting the aid of such a spirit can ensure a productive hunt, or bloody victory in a battle with another clan. Humans are not alone in following this blood-soaked path. Corn's favor can also come to the brutal orcs, despite their own gods Gork and Morg. Fierce Neculi mercenaries, bloodthirsty rock gall hunters, or indeed any warrior from any intelligent species can serve the purpose of the Lord of Skulls. They need only pledge blood and skulls to their master to receive his strength in their arms and his rage in their hearts. Even deep within Imperial space, there are those who would unwittingly turn to the worship of Korn. On Hive World, Gangs fight one another for territory and supplies. Sometimes they recruit a deadly assassin to eliminate a particularly powerful opposing gang leader. Such an assassin, at the direction of their temple's leadership, may seek a divine hand to guide their dagger's stroke over the throat of their target. In praying for help to commit such a murder, the assassin runs the risk of attracting the notice of Korn, the Lord of Murder. The assassin's masters may or may not know that their servants end up serving it in turn. They may think that they are offering sacrifices to some other deity, or could simply not care to whom the blood of the kill is consecrated as long as the temple gains power and influence. Regardless, Korn offers its help and claims the blood in payment. Regardless of the need that pushes someone to it, no matter the circumstance or indeed even the name or form by which it is known, one constant binds all to Korn. Blood. Above all, it seeks the spilling of blood. Through murder, slaughter, and war, servants of the Blood God rip apart the flesh of their enemies, staining the soil on thousands of worlds with crimson gore, all in the name of Korn. Nothing pleases it more than the free flow of sanguine life force. It gives the God its power, sustains it, and eases the spreading of its influence. Those who worship corn must ensure that the supply of blood never ceases, for corn cares not from where the blood flows, only that it does. A follower who displeases it by failing to provide sufficient blood sacrifices will likely find themselves as the next offering their blood drunk, their soul consumed, 
and their skull tossed upon the vast mountain of such bones that surrounds the throne of skulls. Though Korn's influence is a steady, constant tide of aggression, pushing the world of mortals to acts of brutality, murder and bloodshed, this is not enough to satiate the thirst of the Lord of Battle. Minor, isolated or subtle acts cannot keep the rivers of its realm flowing with blood or elevate his throne ever higher upon a mound of skulls. They cannot fuel the fires of the boundless rage that exists at the very core of its being. It demands slaughter on a planetary scale, the murder of entire species, and most of all, unending battle. Warfare, constant, epic, and merciless war is required to reap the blood and skulls required to feed the cravings of a god. All intelligent species wage war upon their rivals, even those that claim to seek unity and enlightenment, those that do not willingly submit to the cause of another's greater good, are brought to heal through armed force. For reluctant soldiers, war is a duty performed in service to a higher cause. It serves its purpose as a means to an end of peace. Many, though, find the means of carnage to become an end in itself. To those who serve corn, war needs no justification or purpose beyond the glorious act itself. Splitting a head with a chain axe and feeling the blood strike the flesh of the hand that wields it is its own reward. It becomes a compulsion. Killing begets killing. Blood demands blood. Devotion to corn is a life, no matter how brief or long, filled with days of brutal destruction, broken up only by the need to gather strength until the assault can be launched anew. A single, rage-fueled man can kill a handful of people before he falls, but when hundreds or thousands of such individuals gather together, cities, planets, and even galaxies shake in fear. Armies of Korn's devoted worshippers descend upon a planet with a single purpose, to reap skulls and spill blood for their master. Huge demon engines of war, weapons of incalculable destructive power, are granted to the armies that show the greatest devotion and total the largest body counts. As the doom mortars of these chosen forces rain, grave digger shells down upon the heads of a terrified populace. Ranks of frenzied warriors tear into a planet as if it were itself a living thing. Orbital defenses are smashed, cities are razed, and enemy war machines are obliterated, clearing the way for the killing to begin in earnest. Destruction inflicted from ranged weapons is a start, but true martial achievement can only be realized in close quarters. Each kill committed fuels a greater slaughter. There are no captives taken, no lives spared, corn does not abide mercy. As streets become rivers of blood, and bones shatter beneath advancing boots, the armies of Korn push themselves to greater and greater feats of carnage. At first, pistols are holstered in favor of chainsaws and power axes. The blades bite deeply into the chests and necks of terrified enemy soldiers. The resistance of the flesh generating a feeling of grim satisfaction for the wielder. Soon, even this sensation is not gratifying enough. 
The warriors of Kor need to feel the heat of freshly spilled blood as it pumps out of hearts directly onto their skin. They need to revel in the snapping of arms and ripping of flesh the jagged bone protrusions cause. In these moments, Korn and its followers reach a level of communion that gives the blood god the closest thing it gets to a feeling of being satiated. This feeling, however, is fleeting. As soon as it subsides, Korn bellows in rage and pushes its followers to regroup and prepare to assault their next target. The warfare and the killing never ends. Even in Korn's own realm, the Blood God's domain, where enemies only rarely present themselves, there is war. The generals of Korn's Blood Legions, the mighty Bloodthirsters, lead legions of bloodletters, flesh hounds, and other demons into battle against one another. They hone their brutal skills, even as they dull their blades' edges against the armor of other demons. Axes cut into unnatural flesh in a constant orgy of destruction. Limbs are severed, chests are impaled on horns, faces are ripped apart by teeth and claws. When a battle ends, the wrecked bodies of the fallen are crushed underfoot or tossed into great bottomless chasms. The battlefield remains idle for only as long as it takes for fresh legions to mass. Then the battle cries are heard once more and war begins anew. The only respite from the conflict is reserved for the furnace demons who work the forges creating weapons for the Blood Legions to wield in their next battle, be it within Korn's realm or in the material world. The Cult of Korn Prepare the Dreadclaws and unchain the Mad Ones. Glorious battle awaits us today, for the world below has refused to surrender. Let us descend upon them with fury and rage, giving no quarter and sparing only those warriors who fight well enough to earn a place amongst us. As to the rest, their lives and possessions are ours, but their skulls are for corn. From Captain Corgin, also known as the World Reaver. Corn is the Blood God. An angry and murderous god of chaos whose bellows of limitless rage echo throughout the corridors of time and space. Its great brass throne sits in the realm of chaos upon a mountain of skulls in the midst of a plain of splintered bone and lakes of mortal blood formed from the remains of its followers slain in battle and those who its minions have killed in its name. Korn embodies mindless and absolute violence, destroying everyone and everything within reach, shedding the blood of friend and foe alike simply for the sake and joy of murder and unleashing rage. The followers of Korn are always ferocious warriors and never make use of psychic powers, for the blood god abhors the trickery of magic and cowardly sorcerers, particularly the servants of Zeej. Men and women turn to Korn for the power to conquer, to defeat their enemies in battle, to wreak bloody vengeance, and to attain unmatched martial prowess against all comers. The most fanatical and dedicated of the gods' followers, those whose souls are trapped fully within his bloody embrace, Know that the Blood God truly desires only constant and wild slaughter for its own sake. It cares not from where the blood flows, only that it flows without cease for all eternity. Korn has an immense following among mortals, especially humans, 
as its radiance of raw power and strong emotion beckons all who lust for battle and power over their fellows to his side. Worship of corn is especially embraced by the more primitive and primal human tribes that inhibit many of the feral and feudal worlds across the Imperium of Man. The Blood God's followers are almost all uncontrollable fighters who excel at the art of killing. Cornered cultists share their gods' straightforward philosophy on warfare and battle tactics, preferring to charge directly at their foes in order to defeat them in close, melee combat where they can make the blood really flow. As such, the followers are generally berserkers that pay little heed to tactics or defense in their frenzy for blood. Korn deeply frowns upon the use of sorcery and trickery, and those pursuing the magical arts look elsewhere, perhaps to Zeej, to find a patron for their studies. Unlike the other Chaos Gods, Korn's followers do not go to great lengths to build temples in his honor. Instead, they worship their god on the battlefield, praising it with battle cries such as blood for the blood god, or skulls for the skull throne. The god's followers also offer him praise, and attempt to win his favor by savagely attacking each other when there are no other battles to be fought, sometimes even when there are. It is said that Korn is the easiest chaos god to worship, because while worship of most of the other gods requires rituals, altars, and sacrifices, Korn's demands are simply that its followers spill fresh blood and collect skulls in its name. Those favored by it often receive its chaos blessings, mutations. Sometimes these physical alterations take the form of great strength or a beast-like visage. Sometimes of frightening physical alterations such as the development of horns, claws, or rending talons. Regardless of the mutations that develop, they are displayed proudly by their cornered recipients, and serve both as visible reminders of the blood god's existence and as inspiration for those who have not yet won his favor. The World Eater's Traitor Legion is dedicated solely to Korn and his cause, the shedding of blood and the defeat of all enemies. Cornered Corruption The worship of Korn appeals primarily to warriors, soldiers, other individuals in military occupations, and anyone who feels weak and powerless and wishes they had the physical power to exert their will or take what they wanted. For these individuals, the Blood God provides enhanced strength, vitality and prowess in combat, particularly physical and melee combat. However, the more an individual gives of their soul to call becomes further corrupted by its brand of chaos, the more they are consumed by increasingly uncontrollable feelings of bloodlust, anger, and wrath that can only be sated for a few moments by taking a life. Whilst Cornered's revel in the sense of power granted them by this bloodlust, and the mutational gifts that Korn may provide to enhance their combat prowess. This bloodlust is increasingly uncontrollable and requires them to engage in the most heinous forms of violence to maintain even a semblance of control. Even the momentary relief from the bloodlust that killing provides eventually fades and long-term cornets ultimately transform into screaming monsters of adrenaline and aggression who will do anything to slaughter and kill other living beings until their reason has long since been subverted by a mindless thirst for murder, violence, and savagery. 
Most corners eventually become berserkers of one kind or another, and favor melee weapons, particularly axes, over ranged weaponry, since blades provide a far more visceral experience in combat than firearms or directed energy weapons. Cornets disdain any use of psychic powers or psychic sorcery as dishonorable and the epitome of physical weakness, preferring to do their killing up close and personal. The problem with cornered battle tactics is that they essentially have none. They rely on their sheer ferocity and melee combat prowess to keep them alive long enough to reach their foes and tear them apart. And they usually do. Ultimately, a cornet's only overriding concern is to spill more blood and take more lives for the blood god. They will quite happily sacrifice their own lives to feed their savage god's eternal appetite for slaughter as Korn cares little about whose lives it ultimately claims, so long as the blood continues to flow. And now, onto its relationship with its siblings. In the great game of the Chaos Gods, Korn hates and despises Selanesh, the Prince of Pleasure, above all other beings in the galaxy. The self-indulgent sensuality of the Prince of Chaos is an affront to the warrior instincts of Korn. The Lord of Battle dreams of one day wrapping its scarlet fingers around Slanesh's soft, delicate neck and crushing it until the younger gods' depraved screams of pleasure become shrieks of agony and then, finally, go silent with a satisfying snapping of godly bone. The sense of duty, honor, self-sacrifice that fuels part of Korn's existence is an anathema to the followers of Slanesh, and the very antithesis of their own philosophy of self-indulgent pleasure-seeking. The demonic servants of Korn and Slanesh often attack each other on sight, and their mortal followers are often no less eager to join battle. However, Korn also has little respect for Zeej, the Arch Conspirator. Korn is enraged by the constant machinations of his brother God, the architect of fate's patronage of sorcerers and ambitious, scheming manipulators who strike from the shadows. Instead of in open battle, intensifies the antipathy between it and Zeej's respective followers, and they are frequently in conflict. However, both of them make common cause when the prospect for bloodletting is great, and Zinch's unguessable schemes can be advanced through their mutual efforts. At such times, the Star of Chaos waxes strong in the mortal realm, as the two most potent of the Ruiner's powers temporarily join forces and send their demonic legions to war. Such mercurial pacts seldom endure for long, before Korn's berserk disciples or Zinch's manipulators inevitably turn on their erstwhile allies. The Blood God's Domain I saw constant battle, man fought demon, lightning fought volcano, gazeers of molten brass fought lakes of steaming blood. There was no respite, no peace. That which emerged victorious was immediately set upon by another foe even more terrible. It was blood, spraying and jetting, skulls adding to a throne that pierced the red skies. It was endless screams of rage and fury made incarnate. It was... glorious. From the Sark Slept, a vision geist of the Encrusted Blade. Though the demon-filled battlefields of the Blood God's Domain 
Korn's home in the realm of chaos are many and each is vast beyond reckoning. There is more to this blasted land than just blood-soaked plains populated with warring demons. Violence and despair are constant traveling companions for any unfortunate soul cursed to briefly wander there. Each foreboding hellscape leads to another, more grim than the last. At the heart of it all, Corn watches from its skull throne, surveying its lands and pitting its forces against any convenient foe. Be they fellow demons or foolhardy invaders who seek to wage a doomed war on the Lord of Battle. The Blood God's domain is a realm unlike any other. Storms rage perpetually across crimson skies, sending gale force blasts seemingly composed of pure rage whipping across the plains and mountains. These angry winds tear into the land itself and rip up great chunks of stone and blood-drenched earth tossing them violently back down hundreds of leagues away in explosions of raw destruction. The land, for its part, fights back against the brutal assault of the heavens. Earthquakes send gouts of molten brass skyward, burning up the storm clouds, temporarily ending their rage until the winds regather to begin their assaults anew. New mountains erupt from flat land in an instant, some thrusting into the sky like gigantic living swords, others acting as shields against the advance of the storms. Rivers of boiling blood crisscross the hellish landscape, dividing the realm into territories over which rival bloodthirsters wage war. The blood flows are not content to allow the conquered lands to rest idle. From deep below the ground, new rivers strike through the surface, splitting the lands as easily as an axe opens the bloated gut of a lazy bureaucrat. Each crimson flow sucks down all that once occupied the space, including any demonic legions that might have been marching there. As with its war against the sky, the land retaliates, pushing the banks of the rivers to close in upon themselves. The brass spewing volcanoes send liquid metal into the rivers, evaporating the blood within and sealing the wounds with burning fury. Each piece of the realm of battle constantly fights to obliterate the others. Each acts like a living servant of court wanting to prove to the master of the land that it is the most worthy of the gods' rewards. A visitor to this nightmare realm would surely be driven mad, knowing that every rock, every breeze, and every drop of what should be water is an enemy, looking to kill him with just as much purpose, desire, and violence as the multitudes of demons inhabiting the land. To witness the carnage of the realm of Korn is to know that conflict is a living, breathing thing and not just a curse that troubles the world of men, machines, and aliens. It is to know an eternal truth and thus to know despair. Korn's Rage at the outermost edge of the Blood God's domain, there lies a ring of volcanoes that scholars of the profane have come to call Corn's Rage. Reaching hundreds of kilometers into the air, they belch their thick black smoke and molten brass skyward, creating an impenetrable border that can neither be seen through nor navigated. Darkness and ash hang there, lit ominously from beneath by gouts of flame that incinerate the loose debris along the sides of the volcanoes. Within the ash cloud, blood storms roil, 
Red lightning dances across the clouds as thunder cracks and rolls, like the snap of a bloodthirster's whip, followed by the sound of the hooves of a thousand charging juggernauts. These peaks stand as a bastion against invaders. Their toxic ash and scorching brass flows enough to deter all but the most determined of forces. Those who are arrogant or foolish enough to make the attempt to cross the torturous border are met with more than barriers of heat and jagged rock. The very rock and brass of Korn's rage itself rises up to crush the attackers. Pieces of the rock break away from the side of the mountains, molten brass flowing into them in a hellish semblance of lifeblood. Demons of stone and liquid metal take form, born of rage and defiance. With mindless fury and unadulterated violence, they bludgeon and scorch their foes. Once their grim task is complete, they fall back into lifeless piles, waiting for the call to reform and defend the borders of their master's realm. The Demon Forges At the base of the volcanoes are the forges of the lesser furnace demons. In these sweltering workshops, weapons of war are crafted. All manner of axes, swords, hammers, and armor are created to supply the blood god's eternal wars. Here too, the components of Korn's demon engines are made. Assembly of these huge constructs of war is conducted elsewhere, but the cogs, blades, housings, and armaments all have their beginning here, at the foot of Korn's rage. It is a dangerous place to reside, even by the standards of the rest of the realm. At any moment, a volcano could erupt, flooding the forge with molten brass, it is of no concern to corn if a few demons are incinerated in such mishaps. Others rise from the blood pits to take their place, and the forges continue. Despite the risks, the furnace demons are able to take advantage of the dangers of its rage. Across the plains of battle, it is almost exclusively corn's own minions that do battle and perish. At the fringes of the realm, however, other warriors die agonizing, terrible, bloody deaths. Using tools of fiendish design and rites that even the most depraved chaos sorcerers would dare not undertake, the masters of the hell forges enslave the souls of those mortals who would dare invade the blood god's realm and fuse them with the anvils of corn, The tormented screams of those thus eternally imprisoned blend with the ringing and clanging of each falling hammer that strikes the forge. When white-hot metal is placed on the anvil and pounded into form, the bound soul feels the scorching heat. Thus, as each new weapon or piece of armor is crafted in the demon forges, it is born to the sound of Korn's enemies suffering the gods' everlasting wrath. The Blood Pits Warp energy, the raw stuff of chaos, constantly swirls across the realms of all the greater chaos gods. Its currents and eddies shift and meander seemingly at random causing mutation within the very land itself and everyone and everything they touch. In most cases, this power does not linger in any one place for long. There are, however, locations throughout the Blood God's treacherous domain where the power of the warp collects and stirs. When this happens, great craters are often gouged into the blasted plains, None can say if it takes moments or millennia for these pits to form, or time is meaningless within the realm of chaos. 
Eventually, the wolves' storms break apart, sometimes seeping into the very pits they created. When this happens, Korn commands his minions to intensify their efforts to harvest blood from the mortal world, using the most violent, destructive, and devastating methods they can possibly bring to bear. The souls that perish in such a campaign give their blood to a special dark cause. Their crimson essence is collected in the pit, where it is mixed with molten brass and the measure of Korn's own murderous bile. The resultant lake is a new blood pit. It is from the blood pits that new demons of Korn arise. Bloodletters, furnace demons, and many lesser fiends steadily emerge from the warp and bile and fuse blood, ready to do their master's bidding. The soldiers that vomit forth from that pit will be charged from the day of their creation until the day they fail their master in combat with claiming more blood to refill their pit. Eventually, a pit goes dry. But without fail, soon after it does, a new storm begins to brew, restarting the cycle of bloodshed. The Rivers of Blood Dividing one region of Korn's realm from another like jagged crimson scars on the scorched land are the Rivers of Blood. These kilometer-wide flows are filled with the blood of those who have fallen in service to Korn. Be they victims or followers, nearly all blood that is shed on the gods' behalf on the mortal plane finds its way to these sanguine canals. The blood itself is hot to the point of boiling. Steam made of vaporized blood hangs in the air all along the length of the rivers, creating a palpable red cast to the regions through which they run. Gigantic bubbles rise to the surface, carrying with them occasional remains of something that was unfortunate enough to have fallen into it. As the bubbles burst, globules of steaming, Hot blood launch hundreds of feet into the air, coming back to the ground and landing on the shores in splatter patterns that often resemble the spray of an opened artery. The Lake of Slaughter Thousands of blood rivers cut through the land and end up emptying over a bleak precipice kilometers high. Plunging downward in waterfalls of gore, the lake that formed at the base of the wall is larger than any ocean in the mortal realm and populated with creatures that cannot be. Leviathans of brass and bone swim through the lake, devouring all as they pass. Soaring above the lake, bloodthirsters fight with dragons of pure solid blood. Those that stray too close to the surface of the lake risk being snatched out of the air by the very lake itself. Rising waves on the surface take the shape of warriors and do battle, crashing violently into each other and falling back to the surface in a rain of scattered blood. The Brass Citadel On the far shore of the Lake of Slaughter, the ground is littered with skulls, so many in fact, that whatever foundation may lie beneath them, cannot be touched. For kilometers these skulls stretch away from the shore, and in the distance there rises a great black wall. This is the outer wall of Korn's Brass Citadel. Upon the wall stand guardian demons, with eyes as sharp as their fangs and swords. They watch for any intruder ready to defend their master to the last. Within the walls there are thousands of flesh hounds patrolling the skull yard, sniffing out the blood scent of any who would dare attempt incursion. In the skies, 
Flying between the outer walls and the inner keep, elite bloodthirsters listen for sounds of invasion on the wind. It is rare that any force musters the strength to assault the brass fortress, its guardians deterring all but the most foolish or daring of Korn's rivals from even trying. When the attempt is made, the might of the Blood God's personal host is brought to bear with a fury and rage that threatens to rip a hole between realms. While Korn's brother Chaos Gods could gain much power should they defeat the Blood God in its fortress, the risk of a counter-invasion is too great for such wars to be waged without a dire cause. It is said that if Korn itself should rouse from its throne and personally go to war against the other dark gods, its favored blade would end them all in one mighty sweep, but that such an act would have calamitous results that not even Zinj could predict. It is said that Korn was once consumed by such rage that it took up its sword and smote the ground, splitting it asunder for eternity. This fell sword is known by many names, including Warmaker and the End of All Things, and is capable of laying waste to entire worlds with a single blow. Because of this, an uneasy state of balance exists between the Runer's powers. When it does obliterate the invading armies of its brother gods, they do not exact retribution directly. When the threat is ended, neither does Korn press the advantage, but rather turns back towards its inner sanctum and reclaims its place atop the throne of skulls. Thus is balance maintained in the eternal great game. The Throne of Skulls In the very center of the brass citadel beyond the bastion stair and the eight iron pillars, Korn watches over all its minions from the guard's seat on the Throne of Skulls. From there, it commands its blood legions and mortal servants to bring war to the distant corners of the galaxy. Every victory it witnesses leaves it thirsting for more blood. With every defeat, Korn takes the blood of a failed champion and adds it to the rivers of its realm. Blood will be Korn's. If the god must harvest it from its own minions, so be it. Surrounding the throne of skulls on all sides is a mound of skulls that holds it aloft on its perch. Cornered chaos champions and fallen enemies alike contribute to the mass of bone. Could these skulls speak, some would tell tales from before the long war against what they call the Corpse Emperor of the Imperium when the Primarch Angren had yet to swear his oath to the Blood God. Others would speak of grave mistakes that caused their entire species to fall to the axes of legions of berserkers. The skulls closest to the God, those of its favored champions who have perished in service to their lord after hundreds of violent campaigns, would call out across eternity once more bellowing their war cry, Blood for the Blood God.